All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I wanna to go over Google Ads attribution models. So you can find attribution models by opening your Google Ads account, going to tools and going to conversions. Now, if you don't have any conversions here, then you can see attribution models as you set up your conversions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on conversions here and you're gonna see a screen that looks something like this. So if you have any conversion actions here, they should show up right here. Um, so what you can do is click on your conversion and it's gonna open up a page that shows all the different settings for your conversion. So some of the settings would be the name, the category, the value, and at the very bottom, you're gonna see attribution model. Now, one main thing to keep in mind is you wanna include in conversions any conversion that's important for your business. So that means that when you're running Google Ads, it actually optimizes for those conversions. So if we click on edit settings here, what we can see is there's a name, there's a category. So under category, you might see things like lead, purchase, sale, view of a key page. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep this as other for now, click on cancel, uh, value. So if you have any value here, but as we scroll to the bottom, you can see there's a conversion window. So how long to track conversions after an ad click. So sometimes it might take a, a really long time for you to drive a conversion. Uh, so for some more expensive products, so things that you're selling to a business or something like that, you might wanna do 90 days and make sure that you're really tracking every single click that someone takes on your website. Um, I generally just keep it at 30 days, unless it's a very small conversion window or a very large conversion window, and it really depends on what you're selling. So we'll just keep it at 30 days, but now what we wanna do is come down to attribution model. So under attribution model, it's gonna say, select an attribution model for your search network and shopping conversions. So there's also the attribution modeling report. I'll go over that in a second. If you click right here, you can open up the attribution modeling report. You can also find the attribution report by clicking on tools up here and under measurement opening search attribution. So that's two ways to find the attribution modeling report for your Google Ads account. So now what I wanna do is go over the attribution models. So here are all of them. There's six total, there's data driven, and it's saying right now we currently don't have enough conversion data to use data driven. There's last click, so it gives all the credit to the conversion on the last clicked ad. So the last click someone takes on your advertisement before they convert is gonna get 100% of the credit. First click is the complete opposite of last click, so whatever the first clicked advertisement was will get 100% of the credit. I rarely ever use first click. So linear will give equal credit to every single click on the path. So someone clicks on three different advertisements and they end up converting on the third click. It's gonna give 33% credit to each individual click. So time decay, it's gonna give more credit to the clicks that happen closer in time to the conversion. So you can kind of see the way these charts look. It kind of makes a lot of sense. So time decay means that the first click wouldn't get nearly as much credit as the last click. Position-based, so this gives 40% of credit to the first and the last click and distributes only 20% among other clicks. So if it takes eight clicks for an individual conversion, your first click and last click will get 40% of the credit each, and then each individual click in between will only get 20% total, so they're gonna split that between all of them. Ideally, you can use data-driven. So data-driven is gonna take your past conversion data and it's gonna distribute conversions optimally along the path because they have an idea of, okay, this retargeting click usually leads to this many conversions. This search click usually leads to this many conversions. So they're able to look at all of your individual clicks and see how important they are for driving conversions. Now, as you continue to get more and more data in your account, you're gonna be able to use data-driven here. Um, so there's no, as far as I know, no certain threshold. It's really just a matter of Google Ads getting enough data about your campaigns and about your conversions so you can use data-driven and really credit each click as optimally as possible so you can continue to drive more and more conversions at a lower cost. So what I'm gonna open right now, just so we can go over it in a little bit more detail, is the attribution models page in the Google Ads help. So I'll put this URL at the top here, I'll put it in the video description so you can find this, but it's one way to kind of look at different attribution models. So there's last click, there's first click, linear, time decay, position-based, and data-driven. Now truthfully, I use last click a lot. Um, sometimes I'll use time decay, so I've used time decay in the past, um, but ideally what I wanna use is data-driven because that gives you the best really results for your campaign. Now one way to look at this is, Okay, so they have a hotel here. So a customer finds your site after clicking ads on each searches. So a customer does four total clicks, and then on the final click, three-star hotel, Paulina Florence, they make a reservation. 
So last click would only give credit to that final search. It doesn't give any credit to these first three searches. So to me, I would give some credit to them because it might be something that they're doing their research. They're looking at a bunch of different hotels and I've done a lot of work in travel and I can tell you that there is some time between conversions when it comes to people booking a vacation and trying to find the right hotel. Now, first click would only give it to this first click here. I don't think that would make any sense at all. Linear, each keyword would share equal credit. So I think that would be a good one for this because you're giving equal credit to each individual search. It might've just been the final search that got her to say, okay, this is the best hotel I've looked at. I've been on this website a few times and this is the room that I wanna book. Now with time decay, so this final one would receive the most credit and then this first one would receive the least amount of credit, this would re receive the second least, this would re receive the third least, and then this would receive the most credit. So I like to use time decay, I think that can make a lot of sense for this as well. So position based would give a lot to this first one and this last one, I generally wouldn't use that. Um, so data driven, it's gonna say each keyword would receive part of the credit depending on how much it contributed to driving the conversion. So that would be fine as well. So to me, this one, a linear attribution model would probably be the ideal scenario. You could also do last click attribution model, but that would only give credit to this final click. I would probably use linear in this example. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, if you're not sure what attribution model to use for your Google Ads account, the best thing you can do is first come over here, click on tools and open up search attribution. So you might not have enough data here if you're not driving a lot of conversions. Personally, I don't. So if we just click here, I'm gonna take as much data as possible. So we'll start from April 1st, click on apply. And it's gonna say 11.8% of your conversions took two days to complete. 17.6% of your conversions came from two plus ad clicks. So you can look at different conversion actions here if you click under here. So I wanna make sure it's looking at all of my conversion actions. You can look at your history window. So you can increase this if you want to 60 days, 90 days. I'm just gonna keep it at 30 days for now. Um, and if we scroll down a little bit, you can see it's saying 0.0% of my conversions involve the mobile device. So all of my conversions are coming from desktop, it's saying. Um, if we come down here a little bit, so some of the different things you can look at. So conversions, you can see top conversions. So this will look at my two different conversion actions. You can see assisted conversions. Um, so right now I have 37 last click conversions and four are click assisted conversions. So that means that people took other clicks along the path before they finally reached a conversion. So under cross device activity, you can look at different devices. So right now I have zero conversions with cross device activity. What this would look at is if someone is using a desktop device to begin with, and then they end up using a mobile device to book or vice versa, or maybe they're using a mobile device and then a desktop device, then back to a mobile device. You're able to look at some of this cross device activity. And again, when I was doing a lot of travel work, you really see a lot of cross device conversions because people do a lot of research on their mobile phone and they book a lot on their desktop because it's easier to kind of book everything on a desktop computer. So I'm not gonna look anymore at cross device activity, but that's something else you can look at. So paths, you can look at your top conversion paths. Um, so right now it's just saying two clicks on my farmhouse goal search campaign. So if you're running a retargeting campaign, a lot of times you'll see that as part of the path here. Now, personally, what I like to do is come into Google Analytics. So if you open your Google Analytics account, so this is my Google Analytics account for farmhousegoals.com. If you go to conversion, so you can start to look at what leads to a conversion on your website and where the top sources of your conversions are. So I'm gonna go over this a little more detail in a different video, but if you just come into your Google Analytics account, you open up the left-hand side, you click on conversions here. So you are gonna to have to have some goals enabled or some e-commerce conversions to be able to look at these reports. But if you go to attribution and then model comparison tool, so you're clicking on conversion, and then you're clicking on attribution and then model comparison tool, you can see where most of your conversions came from and it's gonna show last interaction conversions. If you click here, you can see there's first interaction conversions, so it might change a little bit here. Um, if we come down a little bit more, you can see there's linear conversions. And what you might wanna look at is just where your conversions are coming from. Now, the other thing you can do is look at multi-channel funnels. Um, so if you click down here and we click on overview, it's gonna show you where your conversions are coming from, assisted conversions, so it's gonna show how many assisted conversions each individual channel drives for your business. So if you're seeing something like here, so paid search only has two assisted conversions and 22 last click conversions. Now something like social network has 22 assisted conversions 
and 118 last click conversions direct you can see has a lot of assisted conversions so people who go directly to my website now if you're seeing something over here so assisted divided by last click or direct conversions so the higher this number is over here, so the closer it is to one. So you can see right here at 0.45, this one down here is only 0.10. This one's all the way up to 0.80. The higher this number is, it shows how valuable this channel is at driving assisted conversions and last click conversions compared to each other. So something that drives a lot of assisted conversions will have a very high value here. And something that drives just mostly last click or direct conversions, like a social network example here, so 0.19. Um, so that's showing that this would be really more valuable and just last click. Now, if you see your paid search over here, so you can see 0.09, if you see your paid search as very high, then you would wanna make sure you're not using the last click conversion option. So the last click attribution model um, will be more valuable if you see something like this. So something where most of your conversions are coming in as a last click conversion, then you would just wanna optimize for them that way. Otherwise, you might wanna use something like linear, like we talked about over here. So this would work the best for linear because you're seeing people are seeing multiple advertisements and clicking on multiple advertisements before they convert. Or you might want to use something like time decay and give more to every single click that's closer to the conversion. So we're going to come back over here to Google Analytics. And one more thing I want to show you is top conversion paths. So this is showing the paths that people take before they actually complete a conversion on your website. So just some examples here. So someone went from organic search and then direct. Someone went to social network two different times and then they converted. Direct four times. Organic search and then direct twice social network direct direct two times six times nine times so referral to direct so you can see kind of all the different conversion paths that people are taking on my website and then if you look at time lag you can see how long it takes in days before someone converts so i've seen accounts before where a lot of conversions basically came in on these first three days so this would be a last click so someone clicks and converts right away so these other ones would generally be where someone clicks maybe your advertisement once. Um, this is taking into account other traffic sources. So you could just click on Google ads up here and see how long it takes for people to convert. And if it takes a while for people to convert on your website, then you wanna make sure you, you're using the correct attribution model to really reflect that. So if we come back over here to conversion action settings, the last thing I just wanna go over is these one more time. So if you're seeing a lot of last click conversions, then that's the one you'd wanna optimize for. If you're seeing a lot of clicks along the path, so again, we come into Google Analytics here, and what we can see is top conversion paths, assisted conversions. So I like using the assisted conversions report. If you're seeing a lot of assisted conversions from paid search compared to your last click or direct conversions, then you probably wanna come over here and you wanna use either linear or time decay as your attribution model. Truthfully, I don't use position based that often and I don't use first click that often. And ideally what you would wanna use is data driven. So if you come over here to your conversion and use the main conversions that you're optimizing for in your campaigns, I would recommend using data driven. Otherwise, I would recommend using some of the reports I just showed you to decide whether or not last click conversion is gonna be the most valuable for your business or if it's gonna be linear or time decay. Now, last but not least, if we come over to tools up at the top here and we come to measurement and open search attribution one more time and we come back over here, what you can do is click on attribution modeling and it will actually take your campaign into account and you can look at conversions and cost per conversion for some of these different attribution models. So this isn't gonna work the best for my campaign, um, but if you start looking down here, you can see which ones are gonna be the most valuable for your campaign, just based on when people are converting and how many clicks they're taking on the path. So this is really useful for people who are getting a lot of clicks until they really get a conversion. Um, so as you look at some of these different options here, you might be able to find which one will be the most valuable for your business. And again, if you come into Google Analytics and you go to conversions, so you click on conversions and then attribution and then model comparison tool, you can also do the same thing right here. So that's gonna look at all of your traffic sources, but it's gonna help you really understand where the value is coming in, depending on when people actually convert on your website. So hopefully this all makes sense. I know I covered a lot here, uh, but really I just wanted to go over the different attribution models and when you should use them and which ones you should use. Obviously, like I always say, you really need to test things in your account, but you can use some of these reports like the model comparison tool. Um, you can look at this just for Google ads. So if you click on just Google ads here, 
you can see last interaction conversions. Um, so right now it's showing my last interaction cost per acquisition for my search campaign, for my display campaign, last interaction conversion value. So you can look at some of these different options here. So you could do first interaction. So this one is gonna be pretty similar. And again, this isn't the best example because it does, there's not a lot of clicks that happen on the path before someone actually reaches a conversion. Um, but if we scroll down here, you can look at linear. Um, and you can look at how these different conversions would be affected. Um, and it might help you lower your cost per acquisition, increase your return on ad spend if you're using the correct attribution model for your campaign. So that's our video today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I know I covered a lot here and hopefully it kind of all makes sense. Uh, thanks for watching my video again and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.